Hi, my name is uh, Joe Moffey. I'm a data engineer at the uh, PDS Plasma Interactions node, which is located at UCOA. Uh, today, we're just going to be talking a little bit about some of the tools that are available, uh, tools and services that are available from uh, NASA's Planetary Data System and ESA's uh, Planetary Science Archive. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to uh, present some information about uh, tools and services that are available from the planetary data system. And following my presentation, uh, we've got a, a presentation from Sebastian Best from the uh, uh, Planetary Science Archive, uh, and he will be talking about uh, some tools and services that are available through the PSA. So just a background on the PDS. Uh, the PDS is NASA's long-term archive for data from its planetary science missions. Uh, PDS is charged with ensuring the preservation and accessibility of its holdings over the next 50 plus years. Uh, and to this end, uh, PDS requires that the data be stored in formats uh, where the physical location of the data can be easily described. And the PDS also uh, has established a metadata standard, uh, which allows us to describe the, both the observational uh, context uh, for the data and the physical structure of, of the data within the data files. The PDS is, is organized into six uh, discipl science discipline nodes, uh, two support nodes, uh, and a project management team. Uh, this uh, distributed organization is, is designed to ensure that the archive is, is being maintained by experts in their respective disciplines, and, and including researchers uh, who are also customers for the data that they're curating. Uh, these, this, these nodes are distributed throughout uh, uh, the United States uh, uh, in various NASA centers and educational institutions. So in addition to being an archive, uh, the uh, PDS is, uh, distributes the data that, that are included in its holdings. Uh, and uh, the tools that uh, I'm going to be talking about today are designed to support these current users. Uh, they're divided into two subcategories. Uh, these are data discovery and, and acquisition uh, tools and uh, data visualization and analysis tools and services. Uh, each PDS node maintains a uh, set of tools and, and services designed to support the needs of the, the data providers and users that they serve. Um, this presentation is, is only a, a small sampling of, of the full array of, of tools and services that are actually available through PDS. And we'll talk about where you can, uh, you can see uh, what this, this full set of uh, tools and services are, is uh, at the end of the, uh, the presentation. So these, this first set of, uh, of items that I'm going to talk about are uh, designed to help users find and access data uh, that they need uh, from the PDS archive. So the Orbital Data Explorers, or, or ODEs, uh, allow data users to search, display, and download products from Mercury, Venus, Earth's moon, and Mars. Uh, users can search using criteria such as mission and instrument name, data processing level, location, time, observation angle, and many more uh, parameters. There are additional search tools that uh, uh, are used for co MRO coordinated observations and subsets of MOLA, LOLA, Diviner, and MLA. The ODEs are available on the PDS Geosciences website. The Analyst Notebook provides integrated access to data documentation and observation planning for targets uh, for data from land admissions. Uh, this includes InSight, MSL, MER, Phoenix, LaCrosse, and, or excuse me, LaCrosse, and Apollo. The public version of these services provides access to data that have been released to the public. Uh, but there's also a, a uh, science team only version which allows projects to store artifacts prior to the release to the public. And this is uh, to ensure that those products are uh, that, that are intended 
to uh, to show the science intent and, and operational context of, of the data uh, are captured within the, uh, the PDS archive. The Alice Notebook is also available on the Geosciences website. The Outer Planets Unified Search, or OPUS, is uh, a search service which allows users to search, display, and download products uh, from the outer planets, their satellites, and rings. Users can search using criteria such as mission and instrument name, <clears throat> intended target, observation time, ring geometry, body surface geometry, lighting geometry, and, and many more. <clears throat> Excuse me. Opus is available from the PDS Ring Moon Systems uh, or RMS node website. ViewMaster uh, allows data, uh, data users to browse, view, and download data from the PDS RMS node full data holdings. Previews of data sets and individual products are also provided. Uh, links to download full tar zip uh, copies of, of full data collections is available for every data set. ViewMaster is also available on the PDS RMS node website. For the PPI node, uh, the PPI web pages have been updated to include citation information for its data holdings. Uh, this includes author name, title, publisher, publication year, and DOI. Similar information is, is also available from the other PDS nodes as well, uh, either on their web pages or upon download. There is also a major uh, effort underway in PDS to uh, get DOIs for all of its data holdings. And you can obtain these by, by contacting your, uh, the, the node that, that, has the, that curates the data set that you're interested in. Uh, PPI also supports the conversion of uh, uh, its PDS labeled data to VO table and CSV. These uh, conversions are designed to make the data easier to use for uh, data users that prefer these, uh, these formats, and particularly in the case where the original data are binary, uh, which, which many users prefer not to have to use. In addition to this, there are uh, Download options, uh, which uh, allow uh, data users to either download uh, uh, individual files, uh, directories, or even direct full directory trees and, and uh, data and full data sets uh, through an on the fly uh, zip utility. Um, it allows users to, to both compress and, and stream the data uh, with uh, uh, just a single all at a single time. Um, <clears throat> there is also a direct access to the data uh, through the, the PDS PPI website, uh, which allows data users to use uh, uh, utilities like uh, wget and, and rsync to, to download full data sets as well. The next set of uh, tools and services that I'll talk about are uh, ones that are designed to aid users in visualization and analysis of, of data. So uh, the P the excuse me the PPI website uh, uh, allows users to uh, view the data both through Vista, which is a, a line plotter uh, that supports uh, PDS labeled ASCII, binary, and CSV files, or to, to just view the data as a, uh, in a table format. Uh, and both of these, again, are, are available on, uh, from the, uh, on the PDS uh, node web pages. Splash is an interactive display and analysis tool. It supports CSV, ASCII tables, PDS labeled tables, and a number of other formats as well. Uh, the analysis features uh, include uh, filters, uh, data fits, Fourier uh, transforms, minimum variance, and spectral analysis. Splash is a Windows app, and it's available for download from the PPI website. 
Autoplot is an interactive browser of data on the web. It supports, again, many different data formats, including ASCII, binary tables, uh, CDF, FITS, NetCDF, and, and many, many more. Uh, Autoplot is open source and may be downloaded from the autoplot.org uh, website. Uh, and another tool associated with Autoplot is the PNG Walk tool. Uh, PNG Walk is basically a pre-generated set of data plots that, that users can use to quickly page through a data set. Uh, it's, a PNG Walk can be generated uh, using Autoplot in batch mode uh, and using the, the user set uh, uh, image parameters. PNG Walk uh, tool enables a user to very quickly uh, page through plots until they find uh, some sort of uh, uh, data of interest and then allows them to transition very quickly back to Autoplot uh, to explore those, uh, uh, those, those particular events in, in greater detail. The SPICE Toolkit is a standalone library, uh, excuse me, a library of standalone programs and subroutines uh, that may be used in developing programs to, uh, uh, well, subroutines uh, that users can use in their own programs uh, to facilitate the use of SPICE data to calculate geometry, observation geometry, in support of science planning and data analysis. The toolkit is available in a large number of languages for both PC and Mac platforms, and it is available from the PDS NAFE node. Web GeoCalc is a spice based geometry engine app that can be used to calculate on demand observation geometries uh, without coding on the part of the data users. Uh, Web GeoCalc operates uh, using user selected spice data from the NAFE server. It produces numeric. Uh, results and may optionally produce plots as well. And WebGeoCalc is also available from the PDS NAFE website. And then finally, uh, Cosmographia uh, is a SPICE enabled 3D visualization program that uh, generates accurate animations of solar system and space geometry. Uh, both Cosmographia and uh, the data used to, to generate these simulations uh, must be downloaded and run on a, a user's uh, computer and is available from the NAFE website. So in conclusion, I just want to say, uh, first of all, that uh, all the tools and services that I've just described are, are available at no charge uh, from the websites that, uh, that I've indicated. Uh, and the perhaps the, the most important uh, service that we have are our expert uh, data engineers and, and other professionals that, that are more than happy to help you with with any of your questions and regarding these tools or, or any other aspect of, of the PDS archive. Uh, for more information about uh, uh, any of the tools or services that we've talked about here for including training and demos, uh, please stop in at the uh, IPDA PDS booth uh, here at the uh, uh, virtual AGU meeting and a more complete list of, of these tools uh, is available uh, at the PDS engineering node. Uh, it talks about a lot of these tools that, that I didn't necessarily cover, including uh, tools to support uh, data providers as well. Um, and now uh, we'll transition over to uh, Sebastian Bess. Uh, the lead scientist of uh, PSA's planetary science art or ESA's planetary science archive. So uh, just to give you a bit of a quick update of the planetary science archive at ESA, we've been presenting that at uh, EPSC a few months ago. Uh, here is uh, still a bit of, of, of new uh, updates with this uh, archive. So here is a, a, a summary of the various activities that we are um, doing at the Planetary Science Archive. First, our main objectives and our main goal is to support uh, the missions from the uh, agency. And here there is a lot of these missions we've been supporting in the past. Those missions are mostly in legacy 
and the missions which are very active currently, Baby Colombo, Mars Express, and ExoMars. We have a website, the psa.isa.in, from where you will have access to all of the services that we provide, whether it's a graphic, graphical user interface that is now split in various ways of presenting the project, the products to, uh, to in the archive, a product list, an image list, and we have some new uh, views uh, style in the GIS uh, approach, which will be uh, demoing at the end of this presentation. We also have an FTP where you can grab all the data just with one click. We do some uh, community support as much as we can. Those days is a bit difficult, but we are still available uh, by emails or by contact if you need anything. And as just presented by, by Christoph, we are uh, following the recommendations from the IPDA and the standards that are used by the other archives, PDS4, SPICE, EPNTAP in particular. On the side here, I put two uh, boxes which are uh, currently in development. The DOI, digital, digital Object Identifier, which helps to reference better the products. We are working on this. We have some good development and some test cases already available. And we are also developing the guest storage facility, which is uh, an approach for archiving products in a different way, sort of a, a niche to uh, try to facilitate uh, the life of some uh, specific cases. I'll give you an example of that in, in a few minutes. Uh, members of the PSA is sort of everybody divided in, in few groups. Uh, at ESA, we have the archive scientists, the archive engineers, the project scientists. We are all trying to ensure that the data are of good quality and available for everyone for free. And by everyone, we mean all the publics. Um, we are, we have uh, all of the people that are using the archive, the scientists, the public, the media, uh, some uh, are producing the data that we archive and the other ones are using it. So we're trying to bridge this interface between these various communities. And in between, we have our PSA user group, which is advising us on some key strategic decisions that we have to take and trying to improve as much as we want. Uh, as we can, PSA for, for the best of, of everybody. So everybody is sort of part of the PSA one way or another. And that's a good thing. And over the last uh, few years, we've done some quite some improvements uh, in the planetary science archives. So I split it here, like really it's not an exhaustive list. It's just like few example. Uh, Rosetta Mars Express, we are, for instance, archiving now the, the camera data since a few weeks, they are all in the archive. So we have some beautiful images of, of Mars from the VMC camera. We are closing the archive for Rosetta. Uh, we added recently the housekeeping products that you can see here. You have one uh, image from the camera system and then you have all the associated housekeeping products with that observation that could be useful for uh, investigating better the, the surface of the comet. Uh, we have uh, provided access to the European instrument of Chandrayaan-1, uh, Clix, SARA, and CR2. And then for our very active missions, ExoMars and Bepi Colombo, we have different things going on. The monitoring camera are available in the archives. Here is an example of the Earth observation. We have recently released publicly observations from Venus as well. And then in the case of ExoMars, we are finishing the reviews, uh, the science review of Cassis and Nomad. The data are public and we are about to uh, put public the data from Friend uh, relatively soon. So a lot of new data that are coming on a, almost like a weekly, monthly basis in the archives. So don't forget to, to come regularly to check on this. One example that I mentioned at the beginning is the guest storage facility which is an approach to uh, store data which are not necessarily compatible or cannot be archived in a PDS4 format. There are many good reasons for why you cannot do archive in PDS4 format. I'm not going to make an exhaustive list here, but then what we've tried to do at the PSA is to provide a solutions for saving products which are difficult to archive. And so what we provide is a storage facility where data can be archived in the format that you believe are the best. Uh, you know your community the best, so you can uh, really prepare your products in the right format. The only things we require is a small documentation of a really a uh, couple of pages to really describe what is it that you're putting in this storage facility. And also one thing that is very useful and will increase the usability of your uh, products is that we provide DOIs to these products. And those DOIs can actually be cited directly in your papers if we exchange before you finish your publication. And here on the side, I have an example of this DTM uh, of the new, of the UGENS landing site. It's an upgrade of the DTMs. And we have 
done this exercise before the final publication of the paper, so the DUI is mentioned in the paper itself. So do not hesitate to contact us if you have some products you think fits into this, uh, this format. Uh, one of the key things we're working on since uh, several years, and then we're going to uh, a completion and, and, and providing you new services, is geometry. Uh, the geometrical parameters are of significant help uh, to search for products in an archive. This is not an easy task. Uh, we have partnership with uh, Space Rock Design and Snap Planet to develop an agnostic approach to compute geometrical parameters. Uh, this is something very useful. You have an example here of few parameters that we compute. And how we do this is we have developed this interface uh, internally that we call the GeoGen, which is the geometry generator. We're not very uh, uh, creative with names. But what we do is we compute a list of 50 geometrical parameters that we calculate in the same way for all the products in the archive. And the fact that we create them in the same way is very important for us because it means that you can compare various products in the archive, which is using the same inputs, the same spice kernels, the SPK, the CK in particular, the instrument kernels is verified to be in a very good shape. We use the timing and the target of the observations and the detector field of view. And with this, we have a very simplistic but robust approach in generating geometry that help us to search for products in the various ways. And then you can have a, like, a, a look at the side here of an example of some of those uh, parameters we create, solar distance, target declination, maximum incidence angles. So we are really uh, moving forward with this development. We are currently developing this mostly for uh, Mars Express and Rosetta, but we are under development for uh, ExoMars also in particular. And then this uh, calculation of the geometry enables uh, a solid baseline for developing uh, also robust GIS environment. GIS stands for Geographical Information Systems, and we're developing three interfaces in parallel, one for Mars, one for the Comet 67P, and one for uh, the Mars rover, because we are on the surface in this case. The one for the Mars rover is for the moment private, it's in development, there is really nothing for uh, the publics to have access to. The other two are in the final uh, configurations and we are really tweaking the few things to get it released, hopefully uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, so that you can all enjoy these uh, specific systems. Mars Express for the moment is only available in the Mars view and ExoMars will be developed soon. And for the 67P Comet, we are working with the five remote sensing instrument. So it's time to uh, show you a bit how it looks like uh, for, for real here. So let me show you that this is the uh, main entry point for the Planetary Science Archive. This is the home page. So this is the beta version that we are finalizing. Here you will see a new icon, which is available here as well, which is the map view. And if you go here, you will have uh, a landing page, what we call ourselves internally a landing page that uh, tries to guide you towards what you actually would like to achieve. And here you see right away that you have two different views, uh, the Comet 67P or the Mars orbital views. The Mars rover view is hidden, it's in a private mode, so you will not be able to see it. If I click on the 67P orbital view, it will generate a query directly, which is to show me from the five remote sensing instrument all the products that belongs uh, to that have observed 67P. So what you can see here, for instance, is the comet, in this case here. We can rotate it, we can move it. We have a long list of instruments on the side here uh, from all of these. And then we have different products which are projected, uh, provided here in the list. And then what you can do is just like take one of those products and highlight it on the surface of the comet. Where is it located? We have uh, a piece of tools that helps you by rotating automatically the comet so that you can see where is this product. And then here in this case, for instance, you can see and compare that we have these circular features that we are called the pits uh, on the surface of the comet, and that belongs to that region here. So you can see that the projection of the geometry is done, is done in the right way. If you're not familiar with the comet, I mean, you can put like some axes here, which gives you an idea of what is the rotation axis. So the comet will be rotating in these directions, for instance. And then you can really play with all the instruments uh, that are available. And then, for instance, because I'm looking at like more than 400,000 products, I can decide to have a look only, for instance, at other products like Alice. We're not supporting only imaging system. 
spectrometers are very important. And then you will be able to make a query in the same way with the Alice instrument. And then you will be displaying these products here, which is already in the same regions. And then you will be able to actually even look further. This is one of these browse products that the team is providing, which are very important. And if you get yourself uh, familiar with these browse products, you will notice that this is an observation of the surface. And this is actually what you see here. So this is a very interesting feature that we've been developing in this case. You have here this functionality which allows you to select a specific region on the surface of the comet, and you will be able to actually look at the products that belongs to that specific region. This is the region of interest. Uh, it will look through those five instruments, the one that actually have an observations that match that area. It will be really as small as possible. It could be only a corner, for instance. And here, for example, here is uh, a slit from, uh, from Alice, because as you can see here, I've selected Alice only. And you can see that this uh, footprint from this observation is going through that region. So that's something that will help you to further refine the kind of products that you want. And in the same way, you can do a very similar approach with the Mars orbital view here, where if you click on this link, you will be launched to a 2D interface of Mars, which make a query of all the targets as Mars for the instruments of Mars Express. We have for the moment removed the radio instruments. It's a bit more difficult to handle, but we hope that we'll be able to do it really rapidly. So we do this in 2D, it's more common. We have to do the 3D for the comet, it's a bit more complicated. But here you will see that we are uh, showing quite a lot of observations. This might look a bit messy at first, but this is because we are providing more than 100 footprints of various instruments. And you can see here that the first two are Omega or Aspera. The products are um, sorted by time. The most recent one are put at the top. And then in the same way, you can decide to actually select only a few of the instruments. So for instance, I would be interested in myself in doing some comparison between HRSC and Omega. I want to have the spectrometer and the context with the camera as well. So I will be selecting those two instruments only. And in the same way, the interface will just report back to you all the observations that are projectable in this interface and belong to these two instruments. And you will start to see that we have here some footprints which are a bit uh, more familiar with remote sensing instrument. One of the big uh, advantage uh, and the big novelty that we've been developing in the PSA is this functionality that uh, you are capable of visualizing observation that cross the poles and cross the anti-meridian. This is the development we do in partnership with the Snap Planet company and with Space Frog. And this is something that is very uh, not easy to do and not a lot of services provide that functionality. And then here, for instance, you can see on the side these uh, projected pro uh, observations from Mars Express. And then you can see that it need it crossed the entire pole at the top here. And in the same way, you will be able to make uh, a search by a region of interest. For instance, you will be able to select here a small regions and it will report for these two instruments all the observations that have observed this small volcano on the surface of, of Mars. And that will be uh, very easy in the same way as for the comets to just pinpoint to the observations you need in a specific region. And in that case, you can see that we have a, quite a lot of observation that cross the poles uh, as well. But then that will help you to really select the observations from the instruments that you want to look at. And to finalize uh, this presentation, I just want to highlight that what we do here is just another way of projecting the data uh, on the surface of a planet. We are using the same filtering functionality, the same services. Here, for instance, this region of interest is just a box of coordinates. And then you can go back to the table view here and have the same results of your query being displayed in a different way. So whatever fits the best your needs, you can have uh, probably a service that is available in the PSA to, uh, to highlight the products you want to, do, to look at, hopefully uh, publishing good science results at the end. So that's what I wanted to just uh, share with you briefly for the, um, for the Planetary Science Archive. Uh, do not hesitate to contact uh, us if you have any additional questions. And uh, thank you very much for being, uh, being with us uh, today. All right. Well, well I want to thank everyone that's, uh, that's joined us uh, today uh, for these two presentations. Um, 
Got a, a question here from Andrew Annix. Uh, how closely is PDS monitoring the progress of open source initiatives from the Earth observing community like uh, Pangeo? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, that is something that, that we've been discussing in PDS, trying to make sure that we're not, uh, again, duplicating uh, our uh, coding efforts uh, as we have uh, far too often in the past. Uh, and so we, we have been working uh, to, to make sure all, uh, all of our code is, is open source and, and on GitHub and, and, uh, and, and to, to make sure that uh, it's accessible to, to each other and to, to other outside groups. Uh, how, how much uh, We've been looking at, at uh, sources outside of our community. I, I don't know the answer to that question, uh, but uh, that's something that uh, Jordan uh, Padams uh, of the uh, uh, PDS uh, engineering node uh, would probably be able to provide a, a better answer. And, and Andrew, if you, uh, uh, if, if you let me know how to contact you, I can, I can give you his contact information and, and, and you can uh, direct that question to him. Are there any other uh, questions that anyone has from the presentation? Well, we give people a, a chance to, to add questions. Uh, I just wanted to give a plug for the, uh, the IPDA uh, PDS booth. Uh, please visit us. Uh, we are offering uh, uh, demos and, and uh, training on, on these various tools and, and others that, that uh, weren't covered in the presentations. Um, and we can do it either, uh, we've got some of our trainers are, are set up to, to uh, present, uh, to, to help out in, in real time, uh, or we can uh, set up a time outside of the uh, uh, AGU conference in the weeks following or, or things like that, uh, if you're interested in, in additional information about how these tools work. Uh, more detailed information about how the tools work. And the other thing is, is that we also have a daily drawing for a 3D printed uh, model of, of Bennu. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to enter uh, in our drawing, please uh, visit the booth and just let one of the staff members know and we'll uh, add you to our, uh, our drawing list. And Andrew, I see your uh, your email there, so I'll, I'll uh, get you in contact with Jordan. Thank you. Any other questions about any of the specific tools or, or about the tools and services in general that we've, we've got through PDS? Or the IPDA? Okay, so we've got a question here um, from Ashok Verma. Uh, projected release date of the Gaia 3 measurements for solar system objects. Uh, that's a, uh, I, I'm not sure the answer to that question either, unfortunately. Um, uh, but I, I, can, uh, I can research that for you and, and uh, try to find an answer. Uh, for you. So, and, and Ashok, I, your information I have, so I can, uh, I, I can get that information to you. If any of you have questions that you think of after uh, 
later on today. Uh, my email is uh, jmafi at igpp.ucla.edu. Uh, uh, feel free to, to send me uh, uh, an email with, with any other questions you have. Uh, I, I won't necessarily know the answer uh, to your question, but I, I certainly will figure out uh, the, the right person to answer your questions. The, uh, just, I mentioned this about PDS. I'm, I'm from the uh, Planetary Plasma Interactions node of PDS. Uh, the way the PDS is organized is, is that we have uh, discipline-specific nodes that, that specialize in, in particular types of science or, or services. And, uh, and our particular node uh, works with fields and particles data. Uh, uh, so I can probably answer uh, uh, more questions regarding fields and particles data than, than I can uh, uh, imaging or some of the other uh, disciplines. All right, so if, if there's no more questions, again, I'm going to go ahead and post my email to the chat if any of you want to contact me afterwards. And so if you do think of any other questions or, or uh, that, that you have uh, later, please uh, feel free to uh, uh, to contact me. Uh, and, and again, I can uh, either, if I can't answer your question, I'll, I'll direct it to somebody that can. Again, thank you so much for, for attending our webinar, uh, our, our broadcast, uh, learning a little bit more about the, the tools and services we have uh, through the IPDA members, uh, the ESA's uh, PSA and, and uh, NASA's uh, PDS. And we will uh, talk to you all hopefully uh, soon. Thanks so much.